Ladies and gentlemen of Knucklehead Nation, we're here with Blake, Bulletproof Troop. It's been a minute since we had you on the channel, brother. Uh, what have you been up to since the last time we spoke to you? Shit, so um, for those that don't know, I got in a bad car accident. Um, so I've been on the shelf dealing with some injuries, um, which I'm coming back from. I'm doing some limited training and stuff, but it's going to be a little bit... Um, I'm not even sure. I can't even really say a time on it. Whatever return to play would be in terms of return to competition, but been doing a bunch of stuff that I can, making moves outside of there. Um, I started a motivational video series that I'll tell you guys about later. And I've been trying to make some moves in professional wrestling um, in terms of expanding my network and trying to <coughs> trying to make shit happen, you oh. know? So I love it, man. Always on the marketing tip. Yeah. Blake Troop, a lot of these fighters can learn a lot from you, my man. Um, Speaking of being on the shelf of marketing, I went to Rock LA and got, I had a partial label tear, partial rotator cuff tear, a bad bone contusion. And I went to Rock LA and I got a stem cell injection in my shoulder. And man, it's, it has been a game changer, you know? Um, and so that's another thing since I've been on the, sitting on the shelf. Any of you fighters that have got some crazy stuff going on that's been really bothering you, you, you know, you had partial ACL tear or something, never did anything about it, you're not at 100%. Dude, talk to my people at Rock LA. Um, Dr. D, man, get yourself a stem cell injection. They work on, they'll do payments with you. Like I, it's, I have a brand new shoulder. It's nuts. I can't even, I can't even that's believe awesome. how much better my shoulder that's feels. Awesome. So that's another thing that's been going on, but, and that's the marketing field. That's dope. <laughs> that's dope. So Blake. Blake, you were at Fighters Rep 5 this weekend. Um, not as a fighter, but as a coach. Yeah. You corner a lot of these uh, young talents coming out of Black House. Some of the best young talent that I uh, over and over tell people is probably, you know, the best talent in the world we got down here in SoCal. Especially I agree coming out of that. Yeah. I think if you're talking about hotbeds, California, Southern California especially is a hotbed for combat yeah. sports, 100%. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you know, just your overall uh, reaction to the event, man. What did you think about it? So, it was, it was good. I, first of all, I'll start with the venue, getting there. The venue was awesome, you know. Um, Nice, spacious. Things weren't crammed together. There were nice places to stand. There's a nice VIP area. Um, food and drinks. Everything was very fairly priced. Tickets, you know, where nothing was outrageous. It wasn't ten bucks to get a beer. It was five dollars to get a beer. <coughs> it's reasonable. Popcorn for like three bucks. Like, so the food, all that stuff, awesome. Now the fights. Everything was very. There were very well matched fights. Thanks, man. So yeah, you see some. I I really enjoyed watching a handful of the fights. Um, and I was stoked to see, and it's also cool seeing the MMA guys fight each other with just stand up because it changes the MMA game, you know. So, seeing mm -hmm. like, um, because my little brother Danny Arcajona fought Schwenke and Barbieri, right? Right, you know. Right. So, seeing those two guys banging out and just standing, you know, like there's a lot of banging Logan Hooper and um, the guy Adam, from, Adam Gonzalez, Adam oh, Gonzalez. Man. What a fight those dudes <laughs> were banging. And Adam was, at first when I saw him come out, and Adam, uh, Logan landed some shots on him. Look, he kind of wobbled him in the first round. And, dude, Adam fucking took those and then kept coming back for more. And bro, he, that was an incredible fight. I actually ended up, I thought Adam won the fight. I thought it was, first round could have been an arguable 10 but he didn't quite do enough, in my opinion, to get the eight. Yeah, yeah. And I had Adam winning the next two out of aggression and, and pushing on, like, but it was an incredible fight. Logan, look, he got tired a few times. Eight, six, seven, ping, ping, ping. And he started bouncing his head over. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I had, I had it two to one, Adam. But I mean, it was a great fight. I would, I don't even care who won. I don't, let me watch the fight again. <laughs> you know, I would rather see fights like that where it's two guys coming to fight, which is a big thing that I push about, like make fighting violent. Yeah, yeah. That's what people want to see. There's a reason why that fight stood out. It was two dudes who came and had a fist fight. And and the fact that they were super heavyweights may have had something to do with it as well. Yeah, well, I'm shocked neither of those dudes went down because they both <laughs> hit each other pretty much as hard as they could. And those dudes were probably closer to 300 pounds than yeah. 250. Adam Adam came in. We agreed. He's for like 6'7", 6'8". He's a giant. Well, yeah, well, Logan, yeah, Logan 6'8". And Adam came in at 300 pounds, I believe. You know, and I told him, hey, super heavy over 265 with the IKF. You guys just come in over 265 and you guys can fight and... Man, did they fight. How much Logan weighed, 265? I think Logan was a little bit heavier than that. Yeah, I would have said he was probably like 278. Yeah, he was a big boy. But those dudes are huge. I'm a big dude. I'm 6'4", 220. And those dudes were big. Yeah, and they were banging. But that's another thing I really like about the amateur fights, um, especially the ones that you match where 
it's hungry guys there with something to prove. Yeah. yeah. You know, that are going to come fight. And a lot of times I tell people with, with amateurs, I think the biggest asset an amateur can have is a will to win and to be aggressive and be able to take shots. I would rather be the less technical guy in that case and be willing to come fight somebody and, and do that. You can see guys that are good. You can tell they're probably pretty good in the gym. But when a dude's really pushing on him and putting it on him, like, how are you going to react? Yeah. You know? Yeah, I've enjoyed that. Igor breaking his leg. That was an unfortunate. That was crazy. Man. I'm not surprised. I saw him in the back banging the pads. And I was like, damn, that motherfucker's throwing. Yeah, I know. And he threw that kick and got checked. And the leg wasn't ready for the power. Man, man. It's too bad. You know, I hope he comes. I thought I was hoping it was just a dislocated ankle. I could tell by the way he was hopping. It looked like he was hanging. Yeah, I know. But I couldn't tell with the shin pad on. I heard it was a broken tip. Bib. Yeah, man, he, he broke both bones. I actually went to the hospital the next day to, to go check on him, see how he was doing. Uh, they had to put a rod through his leg. You know, it was not Anderson. surprised if they broke it all the way. I'm not surprised. Yeah, it was it was the Anderson Silva injury all over again. Yeah. Uh, but for an amateur, I mean, what are the chances? You know, um, I'm not crazy as surprised to hear that though. How hard he hits and not having as much of he's only been how long has his shins been getting conditioned for? Yeah. Anderson, on the other hand, what 25 years yeah. versus. <laughs> You know, I mean, how, I don't know how long guys been trying to get, but even if it's two yeah. years, what's that in terms of bone well, conditioning and body adaptation to that stress of checking kicks? You know, well, Igor's kind of a kind of a madman. He's he really, he really pushes himself very hard, and it wouldn't surprise me. I think he told me he had like some injury already, kind of going on. So it wouldn't surprise me if he probably should have not been on that leg. And uh, but he's just he's just a beast, man. He's a warrior. Like I've seen the way he yeah. is. He just wants to fight, you know. So it was very sad for me to see that happen to him. But he'll, I think he'll be back. I think he'll be. Yeah, back. I mean, it's, it's one of those unfortunate like freak accidents where it's like, what can you have really have done differently? You know, like it sucks. And but what could it's like? I don't want to say it's completely unavoidable, but man, I'm not, I can't think any ways to have avoided that. Like, and you know, he's. A, I mean, he's lands. So many kicks in the gym. He landed, you know, he threw so many kicks backstage. Right. I mean, it's a pad, but still, you know, he's back there. He's back there training. I'm sure he's been training. And for him to go out there and it happened to him on the first kick that he threw, it's really just crazy odds, you know? What are the chances yeah. of that happening? I mean, it shows how hard the guy comes out. He comes out yeah, hot. Yeah, yeah. Like, he was hitting hard in the, in the locker room and he comes out hot. So I can yeah, respect, yeah. respect that and threw a hard ass kick and yeah. his leg, unfortunately, wasn't ready for it, but that's power. So on another uh, on another tip, Black House had a good night that night. We did no losses. We went three zero and one. Very which, nice. Which yeah, it was cool. Um, we had Eric had his first fight, won a decision. I thought he did pretty well. Um, he listened very well. I thought he controlled the fight. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we had. Uh, That's Eric Tach you're talking Eric about. Eric Tach, yeah. yeah. Um, and so Eric is a good kid. I used to train him over. I love kickboxing. He's an instructor there. And I got him interested in kind of competing. And he came over to Black House. He's been working there since. He had great technique, but it was pretty technique initially. Where now he's really working towards functional technique. You know, that looks pretty as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. The functionality of it. And um, Is it you? I mean, who's training him? Is it McGill's? McGill's is a rage. His coach. Okay, okay. So, um, but uh, he did a great job. Played long. Listened very well. The things we told him in the corner, just the way things set up. And they all work perfect, which is awesome as a coach because now that motherfucker is going to listen to you the next time you're, you're coaching him. Because when you're not in the middle of the storm, you can see a lot more of what's going on, which you might, you might be tunnel vision inside of the, inside no, of the battlefield, yeah. you know? So Eric looked good. Keita, Keita had a good fight. I thought that he was losing going into round three. And it's like, man, you need to like fucking try and drop, drop this before you need to kind of <laughs> yeah. put this dude away to win the fight. Yeah. Uh, and he landed a nice, nice head kick. Got, got like an eight count, you know. Um, and ended up being a draw, which I'll well, take a draw. You know, if we lost the first two rounds and end up getting dropping the guy in the third, I think that that's. I'd rather be that guy than the coach who had a, like, bro, you were fucking winning and right, dropped. Right, like right, right. he lost that fight. He landed some nice body kicks. He did once he opened up because he seemed a little hesitant at first, yeah, a little yeah. gun shy at first, which I don't blame him. You know. Uh, it's a big event. There's a lot of people there being loud and stuff. Um, and I think a lot of guys do kind of come out gunshot. But like I said, by the third round, he had fully opened up. Yeah, um, yeah. Then we had... We had Bre you guys had Brent? Yeah, Brent looked fantastic as yeah, well. Came yeah. out, was landing great shots. Um, 
great kicks like that side kick to the body. Brent was Brent looked great too. Um, I was I was impressed by him. So he owns a, a martial arts studio in Redondo Beach. He trains mm-hmm. in Miguel. Nice to see you. And um, so he's a traditional martial arts background. You could see it a lot in his kicks where it wasn't like traditional Thai. Just it was like a karate stance he had going. Uh, yeah, on, I'm not right? sure what traditional style was, but it was some something, something like, like that. that yeah. um, wouldn't surprise me if it is karate though, with how sideways yeah, stands yeah. it was and stuff. But you know, and it's awesome seeing different styles like that matching up in a, a Muay Thai because you don't know where you're throwing that side kick. Like yeah, I yeah. don't really train much side kick. It's, if you start throwing side kicks at me, I wouldn't probably like it so much. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Where it's interesting to see that, and but he's versed in Muay Thai as well. Where you're gonna see a guy bringing these these different tools to. Like, I think styles styles make fights, and so having a versatile style in terms of something like that with a, a little twist in the background, I think. I was, I was I had a lot of fun watching that fight. Yeah, yeah, no, it was a good time, and like you said, there were a lot of people there. Dude, it was packed. Yeah, we. Had it a was lot of packed. There. there was a. It looked like just about every seat was full. The yeah. VIP area was all full, and then there's a bunch of people standing. Standing up, yeah, sitting on bleachers. We had some bleachers. Yeah, that, I saw uh, those bleachers that got brought in on the side. Yeah, right? yeah. So it was good, and you know the kids were put under a lot of pressure, and they came through. Um, and although, I mean, I thought the fights were, you know, all pretty close for the most part. Very know? well matched, yeah. I thought. You know, I mean, there was one, like, knockout, yeah. you know, yeah. which, I mean, he got knocked out pretty bad, but it shows the competitiveness in the fight. There, yeah. there were definitely some 10 and 8 counts, but one knockout, and I wouldn't even have said that. <clears throat> that guy wasn't, like, getting his ass beat. He got caught by a big Yeah, guy. he just got caught in the right spot. I you know, think. but so it was great. I thought the matching of all the fights on there were great. I, I enjoyed it. I, it was a good card. It was a little long. A little long. But I don't blame sure. everybody for wanting to jump on a fighter's rep card. You know, yeah, I, don't I don't blame them. I really appreciate that, Blake. That means a lot. Yeah, I mean, I match, I match the fights myself. I, I work hard to try to, you know, make them even. Because I feel like when you make the fights even, especially in the, on the amateur level, you're helping the guys out. If, if, if you give, if you feed them tomato cans, you're doing them a disservice. They're gonna end up fighting someone that knows how to fight and get their butts kicked. But absolutely, I agree, hundred percent. And also, when you put these, when you match them closely, and you know, there's a big crowd like that and stuff, it'll bring out the. Be- I feel like it'll bring out the best. The best of the fighter in the crowd. Yeah, yeah. You know, because they go out and smash. I mean, fuck, it's a minute fight. But if it's a back and forth, like like Logan Hooper and Adam, it's that was always, madness. It was wild. That in was there. I was going crazy, and I didn't even fucking know the guys. The crowd was going oh, crazy. Oh, wild. Not like his clinch, knee, oh, elbow. Yeah. And then he starts getting tired. Big pin, wow. Oh, people, exactly. dude, it was nuts. It was, exactly. there was definitely a lot of energy in the crowd. And it is because of closely matched fights like that. Where it's, and as a fighter, where it's, dude, you're winning. Now you're the other guy's like, yeah, now I'm on the, and it just goes back and forth <laughs> yeah. like that in the yeah. crowd where it's like the, the fight energy will feed off the ground too. If it's quiet, like I told people, like, when I'm fighting, Either cheering or booing. I don't give a fuck, but don't be quiet. Yeah, yeah. Like, I fought in Hawaii once at Aloha Stadium, and I was getting booed like crazy. But I didn't care. Just give me the energy. <laughs> Why? Who were you Were you fighting one of their guys? Hawaii, yeah. Oh, I see. Fucking Howley. Yeah, they weren't too, they didn't like me too much. <laughs> but I'd rather that than nothing. Yeah. You know, no energy. Did you win that fight? No, I lost the decision. Ah. Three fives. Right. So there's a whole lot of screaming during the fight. Because everyone, you know... <laughs> Back yeah, and forth. Yeah. I lost a decision. I for sure lost. I fought at one seventy, which was fucking. I can't believe you got down to one seventy. Made weight too. That's crazy. So you know, it was it was a great night. Um, it was mixed rules. You know, I had some full Muay Thai fights. Yeah. I had some modified, which means they can still clinch but can't throw elbows. And then we had unified rules, which is basically glory rules. Right, right? yeah, I noticed that. No I mean, clinching. Couldn't catch it right. <clears throat> or I like, guess one, you could do throw like one knee. Yeah, right. yeah. And, and actually all the Black House guys fought glory rules. Interesting. Which, which I was into. I mean, I, I like the glory rules. I feel like it's nonstop action. Um, but some people like to clinch too, you know, so that's why I kind of mixed it up. Yeah, I mean, I, I like elbows a lot. But, I mean, I could see... Clinch in a two-minute fight. The clinch is what's going to slow down the action. Right, right. So if you're trying to avoid the hugging and holding, because that'll happen, like, you know, but then again, Logan Hooper and Adam, those guys were running off fumes, and they were clinching and grabbing and banging from the clinch. So, like, I can't necessarily say the clinch is going to slow it down because it didn't slow that fight down. Yeah, yeah. What do you think of two-minute rounds? I mean, the the IKF doesn't really allow us 
to do more than two minute rounds for the amateurs. What I think, do you think two minutes about is that? perfect. If anything, some fights maybe add five rounds, but you're gonna watch motherfuckers being able to floor it. Like championship fights, I can see being five twos. I wouldn't go to a third one. I don't think amateurs are prepared for that conditioning wise, really. Yeah. yeah. You know, because um, with Campbell, you just see guys fucking floor it. Because a nine minute fight, and if you have fifty percent more time on there too, yeah. like that minute starts taking away. How many more fights could you have? Cut. 50% of the fights because you're adding 50% of the time. That's you know, true. Like. That's true. Well, Camel actually allows... Three, I mean, Camel does three minutes, but you have to be at your... Going into your fourth fight, and so does your opponent. I can see it being an, an agreement for a third yeah, fight, but yeah. I wouldn't give every guy... A th- like, yeah. if Logan Hooper and Adam were three-minute rounds... Oh, it would have been... Yeah, well, someone would have died in there. What's... I mean, dude, that was perfect. There's enough for both those guys. To, I mean, it's a sprint. Because at this point, when it's two minutes, minute rest. Two minutes... Like... It's, yeah. it's pretty much a sprint. It's a drag race. That's like almost, what, one MMA round? So like, which I think two minute rounds where it is a drag race. There ain't no feeling each other out. Yo, you better get in there and fucking get to work. I should have maybe made that main event five twos, like you said. I mean, now that you made me What it could have should have. Next time. Next time we'll run it back. Um, I also like the, the unified rules, the, the glory rules. They call them unified rules. I like them because in a situation like... Uh, for example, Barbary and, and Schwenke. I mean, if I want to get like a traditionally Muay Thai guy to fight a traditionally MMA guy, I can get them to agree on these glory rules because I mean, it's not like the MMA guy's at a disadvantage. You're both, you're you both off your, at, yeah, your court, start you're, your house. Right, you're both standing and banging. So right. I, I kind of like that and I may be headed that route just so I can involve everybody. You right. know what I mean? And it's a, a lot of action. I mean, I would, I would probably leave it up to people to have the choice if they want to do yeah. the Muay Thai or, you know, or if they want to keep it one way or the other. Because if I was an MMA guy, I would rather be doing Muay Thai because that's, I'd rather be clinching elbows, knees. Yeah. It makes it more towards what I'm... But I like the glory rules. I mean, I think it's just... I think it should kind of be up to the guys that's fighting. Yeah, yeah. I feel you. I feel you. You know? So, thank you so much for that. Um... You're talk- you were just earlier talking about your Motivational Monday. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that before we... Uh, so we I've been doing a, a motivational video series. I call it Make It Happen Monday. Nice, um, nice. Bo- How to Become Bulletproof, Make It Happen Monday is like the hashtag. Um, and it's all about a bunch of things that I do to live a life that I'm satisfied with leading. That's in- encompassing the things that I want to do in my life so that it- if I like, died, I can look back and be stoked with what happened in my life. You know, or be on the route of achieving that instead of it just being thoughts and dreams and as well as a handful of the things that I do to be successful in my life, like a bunch of my tricks to success, which aren't even really that crazy of tricks. Some of them are pretty pretty cool, but it's pretty basic stuff. But when I apply it in this logic to what I'm trying to do in my life, people are always like, wow, that makes so much sense. I don't know why I didn't think about that, you know? And so it's a lot of things like that. And these are things that I've used to help get my life to this point, you know? So I'm not just sitting here selling you some fucking some bullshit. It's stuff that helped me get world titles, North American titles, all kinds of stuff. Where I've gotten myself, where I figured out what I wanted in life and why I wanted those things and then how I put together a plan of achieving stuff and how I put that plan into action. And that's why I call it Make It Happen Monday. This is how I make shit happen. You know, and I'm a make shit happen there. So if you're looking to take advice about making shit happen, I got you. Where, where can we watch Make It Happen? Every Monday, I post on my Instagram, uh, at Bulletproof Troop. Um, I'm trying to post on Twitter a little bit more, too, Big Troop 22, but I don't really use it too often. Uh, or my Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Bulletproof Trooper. And, uh, yeah, shoot me a DM if you want to check out some of the old stuff and you can't find it. Just shoot me a message. Uh, if you got any questions or anything along those lines about um, the application of some of my suggestions in your own personal life, because... My, my goals are going to be different than your goals, just like George's goals. We have different plans. I'm telling you how I figured out what my plan was and how you can try and look at, take these same steps to figure out what it is for you. It's not, here's what I want to do with my life, so here's the best way to do what I did. It's how you can figure out what you want. Uh, but yeah, Bull Group Troop on Instagram, brother. Awesome, Blake. Hey, man, we really appreciate your time. We're really looking forward to you getting back in there after this little layoff and you know, four straight wins, make it five, maybe jump in the UFC. Bam. And so, uh, thank you for your time. I mean, Absolutely, brother. See Appreciate you. Next, see you at the next fighter's rep event. I'll be too. there.